Okay, so let's talk about the challenges of PA design in CMOS. So for a typical Wi-Fi power amplifier, it must deliver about 17 dBms or 50 milliwatts of linear power into a 50 ohm load, which is our antenna. And Wi-Fi signals operate with what we call a large peak to average power ratio. The PAPR or peak to average power ratio can be 8 to 10 dBs, we'll just call it 8 for now, which means that the saturated output power of the PA needs to be about 25 dBm. 25 dBm is about 316 milliwatts. So the output power is the power that we deliver into our opt, assuming that we don't have any losses in our network. So we're going to assume that P out is equal to VRMS squared over R opt. We're going to assume that VRMS is equal to the peak voltage swing over root two. And we're going to assume the peak voltage swing is equal to VDD minus VNE. For simplicity, we're going to assume that V knee is negligible for the time being. Okay, so we can now make some substitutions and find what VDD would need to be in order to achieve this output power into 50 ohms. So we find that VDD is equal to two times the output power times the optimum resistance and the square root of that quantity. In other words, if we make some substitutions for the numbers, we find that VDD needs to be about 5.6. So we would need VDD to be greater than or equal to 5.6 volts if we wanted to operate uh, into our 50 ohm load with greater than the power required. But in fine line CMOS, VDDs are limited to less than a volt. And typically we also have a VNE that's greater than zero volts. It might be somewhere between 0.1 and 0.2 volts. So our solution for the time being is to transform 50 ohms to the optimum termination impedance using a matching network. In other words, what we're doing is reducing the voltage swing and increasing the current swing because we can make a CMOS device very wide. This is important because though a CMOS device can't handle a very high voltage across it, if we make it wide, it can handle a high current. Okay, so now let's constrain our voltage and instead figure out what our opt needs to be in order to deliver the power that we were just discussing. So our opt is equal to VDD minus VNE squared divided by 2 times PSAT. If we plug some example numbers in, we find that our opt needs to be about 1.3 ohms. And this doesn't account for any losses in the matching network or any current division due to finite output impedance of the transistor. So in order to achieve this optimum termination impedance of 1.3 ohms, we would need an impedance transformation network that transforms with a six to one transformer. So for the time being, we're going to assume that we have just a transformer that's going to do our impedance transformation, and it's a one to six transformer. And we're going to add some loss to the transformer. Let's just say that each winding has about one ohm of resistance in series with it. Okay, so we need 316 milliwatts at the antenna. That means, means that we need a voltage swing of about 4 volts. And that would mean that there would be about 79 milliamps flowing through the winding. If we go across the transformer, we would find that the current flowing through the winding on this side is about 474 milliamps. And there would be a voltage swing on the PA of about 0.67 volts. So we can estimate the loss in the transformer is one half I squared R. And 
and it equals about 112 milliwatts. If the power amplifier we're using is operating in class A, and we'll discuss this more uh, later, uh, the maximum efficiency of a class A power amplifier is 50%. So from this, we can estimate the DC power consumed. We're going to estimate the DC power consumed as P out plus P loss divided by the eta max for the power amplifier. So our DC power consumed is about 856 milliwatts. So if we were to recalculate the total efficiency at the antenna, including these losses, we would just take the ratio of the power delivered to the antenna, 316 milliwatts, divided by the total power, uh, DC power consumed, which is 856 milliwatts, and it would be an efficiency of 37%. And it's important to note that this is the saturated efficiency, and it decreases substantially as the output power is decreased. In other words, for this particular power amplifier, we would need about two times the extra power to be dissipated as heat in order to deliver the desired power. So in the next video, we're going to start to discuss Class A operation.